Greetings everybody. Today I have a very weird and wonderful fruit, the barojo. Barojo, the word, uh, literally translates to head-shaped fruit. And uh, yeah, kind of looks like that, but one thing about it, and you definitely don't want your head to be like this, it's super, super soft. Just like putting this on the table, it's got a flat spot. You see that? <laughs> It's just like full of a very, very soft pulp. And when these are ripe, they actually have to fall from the tree. You can't pick them unripe. You don't want to use it like that. You have to wait for it to turn this soft and then it falls. And when it falls, it often like breaks and makes a big mess. So because of that, getting your hands on a fresh and intact Barojo fruit is extremely hard to do. In areas where people consume this, it's often not sold like this, it's sold just like the pulp. So they take the pulp and they put it inside a little baggie and they seal it up real tight. So you'll see like, uh, kind of like a chain of these little black sludge mixtures hanging from a fruit vendor. That is this guy. And where that's really popular is actually in Colombia. When I was in Colombia, uh, I saw this like all over the place but didn't realize that it was this. I was just like, huh, maybe it was like tamarind or something. But no, that was burrojo and I did not buy it, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. So, but uh, today I do have it. And uh, this was given to me by Don Carlos. So Don Carlos, thank you very much. He grows this on his farm here in Costa Rica. However, uh, although it does grow in Costa Rica, and I believe it actually, uh, naturally grows here in some amount, especially like in the southern part of Costa Rica. It's not common. Here in San Jose, I have not seen this for sale anywhere. Not the fresh fruit, of course, but also not the pulp or any juices or anything like that. The Barojo is in the Rubaceae family, which is a family that contains good things like coffee and it contains bad things like noni. Uh, Noni, if you haven't been watching this channel for very long, is uh, my most hated fruit because it smells and tastes kind of like vomit and cheese. This does have a little bit of that smell. It's got a... not terribly. It's got a sweet smell, but it is a little bit cheesy. You get a little touch of that Noni smell. Uh, does it taste like that, though? We'll, we'll find out. People do not eat this fresh. They make a juice out of it. So maybe fresh out of hand, it might give me some difficulty, but I'm going to attempt to make a uh, juice out of this. But first, let's, let's get into this. Let's open it up. It's so soft, I am actually like tempted just to rip into it. But let's, let's be a little bit classy. I'm going to use a knife and just cut it open. Uh, let's cut it open horizontally. Oh, <laughs> it's really, really sticky in there. I can like almost pick up the fruit with the knife <laughs> because it's so sticky. It's like glue. Oh yeah, that's not a pretty looking fruit. That's not pretty. It's supposed to taste good, but doesn't mean it has to look good. Inside it looks like well, looks a little obscene. Looks kind of like poop, guys. Uh, let's let's call it what it is. The smell coming off of it is um, very sweet. It's like a sweet, almost like uh, apple sort of sort of smell, uh, but also a little cheesy. There's one of the seeds there, about the size of uh, like an orange seed, I guess. This video is brought to you by Bright Cellars. Do you like wine? I mean, we all do, right? Actually, I, I don't know because I don't drink. My fiance loves wine though, and every now and then I'll go to the wine store to buy a bottle for her, and I do not know what I'm doing. I go in there, there's just like all these bottles like everywhere, and I'll pick one up and I'll be like, well, this one's got a chicken on it. Is that a good thing? The owner gives me a stink eye, like he knows I shouldn't be in there and he's gonna like ask me to leave. So I like panic and I just like grab something and I go home and it ends up like not even being wine, like a bottle of grenadine or something. That's what happens to me. You probably know more about wine than I do, but I'm sure you can understand the frustration of wanting to try a new wine, but wanting to make sure that it's gonna be something that you like. 
And that is where Bright Cellars is amazing. How it works is that you fill out their quiz about what you like in a wine, and then Bright Cellars will match you with a wine that suits your preferences. Then they will send you bottles directly to you in the mail. Bright Cellars has hundreds of exclusive wine brands and works with small vineyards all around the world. If you get a bottle of wine that you don't like, you can tell them and they will then send you a free bottle of wine with your next box. My fiance is actually sitting right off camera and she filled out the quiz and these are the six wines that were selected for her. So we've got Vanishing Act, which is a Cabernet Sauvignon, World Wine, which is a, which is a Tempranillo, Jumble Sale, which is a Merlot. So uh, she is actually going to give one of these a try. So let's do the uh, Vanishing Act. I think she likes it. For a limited time, Bright Cellars is giving my viewers 50% off their first order of a six bottle box of wine. Check out my link in the description below and thank you, Bright Cellars, for sponsoring this video. Oh, it's so thick. It's like a really, really thick peanut butter. <laughs> Out of hand, I'm not a big fan of this because um, there are good flavors in it and there are flavors that I don't like. So the good flavor in there is kind of apple-y, kind of like tamarind, like a sweet but tart paste. The bad part is that it's kind of bitter. It's got a bit of an herbal taste and it's got a bit of that like noni taste. Not a terrible amount, but it does have a little bit. You make a juice with this, maybe put a little bit of sugar in it. That would be um, that would you know negate some of those negative flavors in here. But out of hand, and it needs help. It's not super sweet. It's less than an apple. I'd say a three out of ten. And it's sour in a weird way because although it is kind of citrusy, like a little lemony. There's also um, like a sharpness to it, like the sourness that you get from cheese. And I'd put that at maybe like a, a six out of 10. I, I don't think anyone would just be eating this with a spoon. This is something you need to prepare. And in fact, that juice is called the juice of love. Love juice. <laughs> and uh, it's because it's used as a uh, aphrodisiac, a way to kind of give you vigor and uh, energy and all that. So it's called love juice. So uh, I want to make some love juice, everybody. And before I do that, I think it's probably good to get an idea of what this is supposed to be. People here in Costa Rica do not really drink love juice. So uh, to do that, let's go to Colombia. Cartagena, Colombia right now, and it might be uh, a bit loud because I'm just over on the side <laughs> at a market here. Uh, I couldn't find a quiet place, so we gotta bear with me a little bit. But what I have right here is uh, Barojo. Yeah, I'm excited to have this because it's something that I've, I've been to Colombia before, and I've walked around, I've seen this like all over the place, and just passed it off. I thought it might have been like tamarind or something, but no, this is a fruit. It is a fruit that has to be held in this sort of way, otherwise it you know turns into liquid. So let's try the juice here. This, I believe, has been mixed with milk. So it's not water and barojo, it's uh, milk. I think it's the more typical way of, of doing it. That's really good. That tastes like apple pie filling. It's a little bit dangerous if the aphrodisiac rumors are true, because um, I would happily drink like a liter of that. Okay, I'm back in Costa Rica, and uh, I think I have a better grasp now of what this is supposed to be like. So, let's make it. Basically, like 
like that, just more diluted. So we're not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to add milk to this, milk and sugar. Some people also add uh, orange and spices and different types of juice to it, coconut milk sometimes. Uh, I do not have those things, so we're gonna keep it kind of simple. So, there you have it. A glass of my own homemade love juice. Wait, what? Yeah, you know, that's all right. I think the one that I had in Colombia had some cinnamon in it, and I think that's a good idea. It does naturally have kind of a spiciness to it, maybe a little bit like cinnamon, but it's mild. But it would go really well with spices like that. So uh, I think if I were to make this again, I would put some more cinnamon, some cloves in there, some nutmeg or something. But as a base, it's nice. It's got like that apple pie sort of taste. It's like apple pie a la mode. And that noni flavor, that vomit and cheese flavor, it is there, but it's really, really low. It's just like a little hint of it. And if I drank this, not knowing that the Barojo is related to Noni, I wouldn't have picked that up. It's only because I know that and because I tried it fresh. Fresh, you get it. You definitely get it, like a little bit. The other flavors in there are good enough where you don't really mind so much. And when you add water and milk and sugar, even more so. Well, everybody, the Barojo is very, very interesting. It's a weird looking fruit. It's a weird tasting fruit. The texture of it is strange. The way it's used is strange. The family it comes from is strange. There's so many interesting things about this fruit. And although it's used like a medicine, it's kind of like borderline. Because I think people drink this not because they're sick, but because it's good for them. Orange juice is good for you, but it tastes good. And this is good for you, and it also tastes pretty good. Not out of hand, but when you prepare it, that is pretty nice. So I think that's about it for the Barojo. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed following along with me on this adventure of mine spanning multiple countries <laughs> to find out more about this really interesting fruit. See you next time. I would like to give a big shout out to Lofty Rex and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on patreon.com. Patreon.com is basically how I can afford to go on all the adventures I do on this channel. So if you enjoy my series and you want to help support me, check out the link in the description below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, I also have t-shirts for sale like this one here, the Durian Anatomy shirt. That is available on my website, which I also put in the description below. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next time.